Hey everyone, it's Jenny and welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. So I just literally wrapped up my last reading vlog and then sat down to start this next one because I'm going to be reading later tonight. So it's 5 p.m. on Tuesday, October 12th. I am planning to read three books during this vlog over the next week. So I'm starting with Velvet Was the Night by Silvia Moreno Garcia. If you've watched like my past two vlogs, you know I am in love with this author now. I've read one of her books for the past two vlogs and loved both of them. They're like new favorites for me. So I have high hopes for this one as well. This one's like a bit of a noir, I believe. Yes, it's a noir, like a mystery, murder mystery um, with like a detective in it as well. I think I honestly don't know a lot about this, but I'm just super excited to read it. It's only about like 300 pages and I have found that her books are really quick reads for me. I finished Mexican Gothic in like basically a day and a half. It would have been actually quicker than that had I not gone out. So yeah, really quick reads for me. Hoping to get to this today and like get through most of it and then finish it off tomorrow. And then I'm hoping to also read Verity by Colleen Hoover, which a lot of you said you loved when I talked about it in my last book haul and also my last TBR. But there were a few of you who said that you absolutely hated it. So I'm curious to see what I'm gonna think of it. It is my first of Colleen Hoover's mysteries or thrillers. I've only read her romances. So I'm curious to see how it's gonna go, but I think it's gonna be a fun one to read for spooky season. And then finally, I have the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I've been wanting to read this for like more than a year now. I first saw it on Kayla's channel, Books and Lala. And yeah, I think it's gonna be like the perfect book to pick up for spooky season for October. So I am just going for this sort of like mystery thriller vibe for this vlog and I'm very, very excited about it. I've just been in the mood to just read a lot, hence all of these reading vlogs, but yeah, very excited about these and cannot wait to dive into each. I will update you along the way throughout the week, but I did wanna give a little reminder for those of you who don't know or haven't heard yet or haven't watched my previous videos where I mentioned this, I do have a Patreon now, which is this really cool, Thing that I'm doing where you can get extra and exclusive content from me when you do like a small little subscription every month. And that includes like extended cuts of some of my vlogs, exclusive content that I'm not gonna post on my general YouTube channel because I just don't think they'll do as well. And some of the tiers also include a monthly book club buddy read where you can read a book with me and with everyone on the Patreon. And then we'll have a live show at the end of the month to discuss said book. So yeah, I'm really excited about it. Right now I'm just getting people to sign up and then starting November 1st, you'll start getting charged and uh, we'll start this Patreon book club up as well. I am planning to do like a little movie night though for the patrons who have signed up in October, like ahead of time for those people who are just like early and you know, wanting to support. And I appreciate all of you who have already signed up because that is just so amazing and it's just like a really great way to support me and help me continue making content for you guys so yeah gonna be doing that little movie night i don't know if this vlog will be up before that happens but if it isn't i will try to include a bit of the behind the scenes and the movie night in this vlog so you can see but yeah loving just this new community that we found and we've started the discord as well and just like seeing everyone introduce themselves and like chat in there has been really great and like just getting to talk to some of you is really, really cool. So I am excited and I hope you'll be excited with me. But with that said, I'm gonna go read and I will update you later. Hello my friends, it's a new day. It is a Saturday, Saturday, October 16th and it is 10.30 a.m. I did not get as far through Velvet Was The Night as I was hoping to, but I am, I think, three quarters in. I have two hours left on the audiobook. It was a bit slow to start and a little bit different from Silvia Moreno Garcia's other books, but regardless, I'm enjoying it. It's starting to ramp up and like get a bit more interesting, so I'm excited to see where it's gonna go. I definitely think it's not gonna be one of my favorite of her books, but still an enjoyable time. I do feel like the mystery sort of takes a while to get started, so in that way it just like sort of started with the characters and then moved into the mystery, which made for sort of a slower beginning. But regardless, still enjoying it. And then literally this morning I was like, oh, you know, I wonder what other books she has. You know, maybe I should try picking up one of the other ones because I know she has another book called Gods of Jade and Shadow. So I was searching up that one. The concept of that one seems super, super interesting because it seems like a full-on fantasy. 
But then I was going through the Goodreads reviews of that and I saw Rick Riordan had posted a Goodreads review of Gods of Jade and Shadow and he was like, I loved her previous vampire novel, Certain Dark Things. And I was like, Sylvia Moreno Garcia has a vampire novel and I'm not reading it in October? What is going on? So I was very, very bothered by the fact that I did not know this. So right now I'm debating whether I should go to the bookstore and grab Certain Dark Things to also read this month. Probably not in this vlog, but sometime this month, hopefully before the end, because I was reading the description of it and I was like, this sounds so freaking cool. Now I'm really intrigued. So I'm probably gonna be grabbing that at some point this week. Either I'm gonna order it online or I'm gonna go into the store and grab it and hopefully I'll take you along. Other than that, I'm just finishing this up and then probably starting Verity next. And then I also recently got a new webcam um, which I'm very excited about. So I'm gonna be testing that out uh, because I have a bunch of live shows hopefully coming soon for, you know, Patreon, which you guys should definitely go check out. The link is down below if you wanna get like exclusive extra perks from me. And we also have like a monthly book club, but I'm also potentially working on something else to come in the future that might also involve some live shows. So I'm excited about that. And as you can see, my room is like a complete mess. So I'm probably gonna be cleaning that up. And that is, that's what's on the docket today. I will update you later when I am done. Velvet was the night. Hello my friends, it's a little bit later. It's about 3 p.m. I just had lunch and I did just watch the beginning of the first episode of You, which I have watched the previous seasons. I kind of like binged them when they came out and it's like, the trashy type of television that like is just fun to watch sometimes so yeah I watched the beginning of that but it's like sort of slow to start so I think I'll probably watch it later when I have more time to binge but I did also before lunch finish Velvet Was the Night by Sylvia Moreno Garcia so as I was kind of saying before this was a little bit different than what I expected I think the author really explains it well in her afterward so she says basically let me find the page yeah, she says, my novel is noir pulp fiction, but it's based on a real horror story. And what she means by real horror story is that this is based on like some actual history, including something called the Dirty War, which was basically like the repressive action against activists and guerrilla fighters um, by the Mexican government and, you know, its various organizations, including um, the organization that one of the main characters is in, Elvis. He's part of the Hawks, which are the, sort of these, like, people who were trained by Mexican authorities with the support of the CIA, who are meant to sort of squash any sort of dissent and, you know, stop the spread of communism in Mexico. And that's, like, a really big theme in the book. And I feel like the politics um, in the book is sort of the main point, um, which is one of the reasons why it was like a little bit different from what I expected, but I think like it's not the fault of the book, it's just like a fault of my expectations. But I think overall, like it was a nice book and I and I enjoyed reading it. Um, the mystery isn't as strong as I thought it would be. It does sort of take a while to get started, but I think once it gets going, it's quite interesting and you want to know sort of what's going on and you know how it's going to end. And I feel like there was a really great twist towards the end, like the very end that I did not see coming and it's sort of tied everything together. But one of the things I also didn't expect was sort of the way that the two perspectives interact in the story. They are very peripheral to each other's lives until the very end, I feel like. And that was also something I didn't expect because I did think that the book was gonna involve a lot more involvement between the two main characters. Whereas in truth, it's more of like two separate stories that are going on that sort of connect. So yeah, this was a lot different than what I expected, but I think what I loved about this was the characters. And I think that's like true of every single Sylvia Moreno Garcia book that I've read. She just has a way of writing characters in a really just compelling and impeccable way. Like I just, I'm so interested in them. Like they're not always likable characters, but they're just so like interesting to read about and like, you just want to know why they are the way they are. And some of them are very weird and quirky, especially the female main character in this book, Maite. She has a very particular personality and she's sort of one of those people who is a very different person in her head and the way she thinks than you would expect just looking at her or like knowing her from the outside. She's a secretary at like a law office, but she really sort of hates her job and her life. And she finds this weird little pleasure in sort of stealing items from her neighbors who she watches pets for. And she's also got like these other weird, quirks to her that I thought was so so interesting and same with Elvis like he's got a whole backstory and like 
thing going on with him and he was also a really interesting character and I think he's more of a dreamer than you would expect um which was really cute and so I just loved like seeing sort of the characters and like what they were up to and how their characters sort of develop over the book um it is a quite short book so regardless I feel like it was a good time and I enjoyed myself I just don't think this was one of my favorites of Silvia Moreno Garcia's but I still love her as an author. I think this was like another great addition, but yeah, just wasn't my favorite, but still a great book. And I think uh, if I had to read it again, I would read it for the characters. I feel like I would curb your expectations in terms of like this being a, you know, mystery thriller. It definitely was more focused on the political aspects, but it did very much feel like a noir. Like I felt those vibes and like the Pulp Fiction vibes. So if you're into that, you might really like this. Okay, so now that I'm done with that, I'm gonna read The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Gertie Hendricks. And I actually just did start this. I'm like on the first chapter, so not far. But I thought it was really cool because I was reading sort of the introduction to the book that the author wrote. And I didn't realize this before, but the author is a man. But in his author's note, he was sort of talking about how when he was a kid, he didn't really take his mother seriously. He just thought that she was one of those like suburban moms and, you know, didn't have much going on for her. And she, you know, went to these stupid book clubs and, you know, did all these frivolous things, he thought. And as he sort of grew up, he realized he was very, very wrong about that because she was a parent and she was dealing with so, so many things and so many responsibilities that she wasn't able to just like hand away. And then he also talks about how this book is also about vampires and how vampires are sort of the original serial killers, you know, a la Ted Bundy and, you know, the people who are not attached to any responsibilities and just have this one hunger. And so what he says in his author's note is, with this book, I wanted to pit a man freed from all responsibilities but his appetites against women whose lives are shaped by their endless responsibilities. I wanted to pit Dracula against my mom. As you'll see, it's not a fair fight. And I just loved that. After I read that, I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited to read this. Like just the idea of like, you know, Dracula versus his mom. I just think that that's such a cute idea. And also seems like a really compelling one. And I, I like how he's sort of thinking of, you know, Dracula and vampires as sort of serial killers. And it sort of connects to the sort of premise of the book of this like, you know, stranger coming into town and people going missing. And it's just like the vampire sort of the metaphor for the predator or the serial killer or whatever it is. So this seems like it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm already liking the voice. And it sort of started out with Patricia, our main character, Patricia Campbell. She's this woman, she's like struggling with taking care of her family and all of the multiple responsibilities that she has. And she's been part of this sort of like really posh book club in her town run by this woman who is like you know very bent on doing things her way and you know reading classics that are really boring and everything so she ends up going to like her book club meeting and not having read the book and it sort of stirs up <laughs> trouble and so she gets invited to this other book club that is going to be reading true crime novels and I think that's where things are gonna get started. So yeah, I'm very excited to see how this is gonna go. It is a chonker, it's like 400 pages, but I'm hoping I can at least get through half of it today. I will let you know how my progress goes, but yeah, that's about all I have for this update. Hello, my friends, it's a little bit later. I decided I wanted to go to the bookstore because I really wanna grab those Sylvia Moreno Garcia books. So they're in stock at my local chapters, Chapters Indigo. So I'm just gonna go run over pick them up and uh, bring them home. I'm probably not even gonna read them today, but I just really wanna have them, I guess. And I'm also feeling a little sleepy, so I'm gonna go grab myself a Starbucks drink of some kind, probably a caramel macchiato or something, maybe an oat shake and espresso. I haven't decided. We're gonna find out, but I thought I would bring you along for the journey, so see you in a little bit.
friends, I just finished at the bookstore and I also went to Starbucks afterwards and got myself a pumpkin spice latte. And actually I haven't had one of these in like a year. And to be honest, I've only had this once before in my life. So I can't really remember how, what I thought of it last time I got it, like basically a year ago for the first time in my life. And I thought, you know what? We're feeling the fall vibes. It's like a Saturday, let's give it a try. So I got myself a pumpkin spice latte with almond milk because I'm basically lactose intolerant. We're gonna see how it goes. I don't have strong hopes, but we'll see. Another thing while I was out and about, I just vaguely forgot during COVID sort of the small kindnesses that you can um, encounter throughout your day in the public world. And it was just really nice to, you know, talk to store employees or you know baristas at starbucks who were just really nice and were like have a nice day and i was like thank you i will have a nice day so yeah this is what i'm feeling but i did want to show you my haul from the bookstore it was funny because i was going through the bookstore and looking for sylvia moreno garcia's books and she had books both in sci-fi fantasy and also in fiction and what i found even more interesting was that mexican gothic was put in fiction and literature rather than horror which just seems weird to me but then like the beautiful ones was put in sci-fi fantasy same with certain dark things um which is her vampire novel which i'm very very excited about and look at this cover it's freaking gorgeous i love the color palette and i also just love like i don't know what it is but like the fantasy vibes on it but also like the cyberpunk vibes with these colors i guess which i'm loving and then gods of jade and shadow was also put in sci-fi fantasy which makes sense because this one's like a full-on high fantasy but i just thought the fact that mexican gothic was put in fiction and literature was weird but regardless yeah i had to really hold back on getting other books at the bookstore but i'm very excited by this haul and i cannot wait to read them so now i'm gonna head home and drink my pumpkin spice latte and read some more i guess but i'll check in with you later i am about 50 60 pages into the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. And it's like about, I think, four chapters in. And it is getting weird. I completely didn't realize that this is actually a horror novel. For some reason, I just thought it was like a mystery novel or something. I know it has vampires, but I am seeing the horror elements coming through in this book. And it is weird. I don't want to specifically say what happened, but it was weird. But it's also interesting sort of seeing the main character's life and how her husband doesn't really treat her right. And she's sort of unhappy with a lot of things in her life. But like the one thing that she really loves is her book club and like her girl crew, which is just really cute and I'm loving. So yeah, I'm just interested to see how like the vampire is gonna come into this and how much more creepy stuff is gonna happen. I'm liking the vibes though, so I'm excited. The only thing is I don't have an audiobook for this, so I am eye reading this, which makes me think that I'm gonna go a lot slower in terms of like, I with audiobooks I tend to just like put them on and I can listen to them when I'm doing other stuff because I have a very short attention span, but like sitting and reading takes a lot of energy from me, but I do read faster technically when I'm eye reading. But regardless, we'll see how this goes. I'll probably end up finishing it during the week and then picking up Verity and hopefully that will be a quick read too. But that one, again, I don't have an audiobook for, so I'll probably be eye reading that one as well. But I'm also like so tempted to pick up Certain Dark Things by Sylvia Moreno Garcia because I have the audiobook for this on script. So I don't know, we'll see. Maybe after Southern Book Club's Guide, I will maybe pick up this on the audiobook because I really want to read it. And it's also got vampires and it's really really short it's like 240 pages which is wild which is another reason why i love sylvia moreno garcia's books because they're all normal sized and like bite sized and easily finishable which i like and for someone with like a short attention span like mine fantastic hello my friends it's much later it's thursday uh, October 21st, I want to say. So I've had a week. It's been a bit of a stressful week with just various things going on, but I did manage to finish the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix a couple nights ago, actually. I think I finished it on Tuesday, I want to say. 
It definitely wasn't yesterday night, but I think it was the night before. And it was absolutely fan-fucking-tastic. My god. Um, I wanted to do an update like earlier as I was reading. And as you can see, like I tabbed so many places. But yeah, I wanted to do an update like when I was like sort of at the middle point. Because that's when it really started to get good for me at least. I was really compelled like from the beginning and was really interested. But I think it did feel a little bit on the slower side for like the first you know, 100 or so pages. But when we got to that middle section, there were so many things that I found so compelling about it, not only with like the plot, but just some of the like really interesting elements the author brings in to do with the setting of the book and sort of the perspective that we were getting. We were getting a very sort of privileged perspective of this white woman and her situation is very different from like, say, the black people down the road in one of the neighboring towns. But her privilege is not you know, paramount to her husband's who is like awful, let me say. So I just loved how there was like this discussion of not only being a mother and um, a stay at home mother and how no one really appreciates their work as actual work. And then there's also this other element of like race as well going on. And basically the main character starts to get wrapped up in this sort of mystery of like these missing children and you know, stuff going on with them. And she's trying to connect it to this a serious man who's come to town and things just get so much more intense as you go and I feel like I don't want to spoil too much with this but like it was just so fantastic the way it was done and sort of the way the main character's journey with this entire story goes. It definitely is a story of like a mom versus Dracula like to the end and even the ending was amazing and I loved loved the way it came together but yeah there's like even like a time jump in this as well which I thought was really cool and really added to the story but I think that whole middle section is really what sold me on the book and just seeing the main character's sort of compassion and desire to help people was really compelling and also just like all of the spooky elements going on and what a compelling villain this book has. James Harris who we know is like sort of a vampire is so great at just like convincing people of his lies and sort of getting you know her husband and the other husbands on his side and you know making the women out to be like these crazy people and just like creating fanciful tales and it's because of you know all the true crime books that they read like they just make up all these stories and you know um gaslight these women into thinking a certain way and gaslight Patricia the main character and her husband don't even get me started on him the real villain for me in this book felt like it was the husbands in this story because the like rampant misogyny was just like so true and I loved just seeing it. It was like so frustrating to read but I loved seeing it. And it's also just like an interesting time period to read about because it is set in the late 80s but also like in the 90s. Overall I just love this book. Like it really surprised me in a very epic way. Like I didn't think I would like it this much. It definitely is one of my favorite books of this entire year. It was also so so spooky. Oh my god that's the other thing I needed to mention. It was so freaking scary and spooky and creepy and terrifying and horrifying at parts. There was not only like the spookiness and sort of thrilling nature of like you know this mystery but also of like wanting to like catch the bad guy but then not being believed and like you know the thrill of like them trying to do things without getting caught and all that but then there was also these elements of like these very strange and weird and slightly disgusting and gross things happening in the book that were just so horrifying and to be honest I don't read a lot of horror so I think this is sort of a staple of the genre but I just loved those parts, even though they were so uncomfortable to read. Like there's a part where, I, this isn't really a spoiler, but like there's a cockroach crawling into someone's ear and they, for whatever reason, cannot move. And so you're just like sitting there as the author describes this cockroach, you know, moving into the character's ear as they were trying to sort of hide themselves. And it was just so intense and I, yeah, I, I almost lost it. But yeah, I was just like so blown by the book and just kept reading. So I think like for two nights in a row, I just kept reading and I finished it on Tuesday night and just was so impressed, so, so impressed. I also like tabbed some quotes that I really liked. One I really liked was from a character named Grace and she says, why do you pretend what we do is nothing? Every day all the chaos and messiness of life happens and every day we clean it up. Without us, they would just wallow in filth and disorder and nothing of consequence would ever get done. Who taught you to sneer at that? I'll tell you who. Someone who took their mother for granted. 
I love that quote because it really sort of embodies to me this whole idea of what the author was sort of trying to portray. The fact that he, you know, didn't appreciate his mother growing up and then sort of pitting her against Dracula in this book and showing how she is stronger than, you know, they all took her for. She is so much more to her than they ever thought she did. And also she's been doing this. She's been dealing with chaos and messiness and all this all her life and she can do basically anything. So another thing I really love is how the book sort of takes the idea of vampires and really compares it to the idea of a serial killer and like predatory men who get away with these things because people just continue to justify their actions, continue to, you know, believe them because they are a straight white man. And so there's this quote where Patricia, the main character, basically says, isn't that how every serial killer gets away with it for so long? Everyone ignores the little things and Ted Bundy keeps killing women until finally someone does what they should have done in the first place and connects the little things that didn't add up. But by then it's too late. This is her saying this after, you know, another character is just trying to justify all these things going on. And it's just like a really interesting sort of concept. Obviously you want to give people the benefit of the doubt, but it's also like when all these things start racking up, why don't we trust ourselves to believe them? And the book sort of connects it to race as well about how like people wouldn't, you know, bat an eye about accusing like a man of color, but you know, because this guy is a white man, like everyone just lets all of his actions slide. And actually there's a moment where the vampire character himself points this out that, you know, because he's a white man, he's gotten away with so many things. And it's like, well, I wonder why. So yeah, it's just so interesting. Like, I think this was just such a great book. It had such great commentary, but also it was super spooky and perfect for Halloween. And it also just had like some really great commentary on like motherhood and like the power of being a mother and just like some really good plot as well. Like I think it was very well plotted and like the pacing was really good too, except for like that beginning section where it was like a little slow to start. Fantastic. Like I, I was just so engrossed in it by the end. And yeah, I'm just like so interested. I'm really curious to see what else the author has written. I know he has another book called The Final Girl Support Group, I think, where it's basically like the final girl of, of like slashers all come together in a like therapy support group. And I don't know where it goes from there, but I'm interested in it. But I did see like sort of lukewarm reviews about it on Goodreads, so I'm on the fence. So if any of you have read it, let me know. But overall, this was fucking fantastic. Like one of the best books I've read this entire year. And I'm just like so happy with how my reading progress is going for October. I've read so many great, amazing books. But yeah, that was like sort of what I was reading this week. I was planning to start Certain Dark Things by Sylvia Moreno Garcia instead of Verity because I wasn't really in the mood for Verity because honest to God, actually, after I'd finished Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, I was so spooked out. I remember finishing it on Tuesday night and I like texted my friend. I'm like, I am so scared right now. Like I do not want to go to sleep. So I had to like watch something happy because it's like kind of a scary story, especially because of the whole idea of like him being a predator and you can see this sort of happening in real life, like the whole serial killer aspect of it. So yeah, that part was scary to me. But yeah, I wanted something that like wasn't a thriller and murder mystery. And this is a vampire book, which I thought would be really fun. And also I wanted to read more Sylvia Morano Garcia. But I do think that I would like to stop the vlog here so that I can start the next one. I think I may leave this for later or if I have time to binge this today or tomorrow. I might, but otherwise I'm planning to read The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson and White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson in my next reading vlog. This is the reading vlog that's gonna span right over the last week before Halloween and it might bleed into Halloween as well. And I thought that these two seem like the perfect reads for them. This one's a witchy book and then this one is a haunted house story. So this is definitely the one I wanna be reading around Halloween time. So yeah, I'm really excited for these ones and I think they're gonna be a lot of fun. They both are YA as well, I believe. So yeah, this is gonna be my next reading vlog. Very excited for it. And then if I have time in between, I will read certain dark things. But yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I was Sort of spooky thrillery books. I had so so much fun with them and I'm just like so excited by all these fantastic reads I've been having. But yeah, I would love to hear from you guys what you've been reading over this past week and what spooky books you've been picking up and also what you thought of either of these reads. Go check out my Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, and TikTok in the description down below. And if you haven't already, go check out my Patreon as well. I'm actually doing a fun little movie night with them. Tomorrow we're gonna be watching Corpse Bride. It's a little spooky movie for the season. But yeah, my Patreon is just like a 
really awesome exclusive space where you can sign up for a membership and you will get exclusive perks from me. So yeah, there's a lot to be discovered there if you wanna go check that out and support me along the way. But yeah, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I will see you in my next video and please remember that this story ain't over. Bye.